right, the Reds, it's talking Reds uh, with me, Gareth Roberts. Got Lizzie Doyle with me this morning, and uh, we're having another natter about footy and that, or lack of. Uh, but I'm going to start with the big questions. Uh, Vimto or Ribena? I'm Ribena, you know. <sighs> See, I'm, I'm... Fizzy Vimto, but still Ribena. I'm massively on the Vimto camp. I smash Vimto. Still I, I like... Vimto? Yeah, it's boss. Yeah. I've, I've got I've got two two bottles of it this week alone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's and not... then you get diabetes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then uh, and and also bad that and bad East tea just on a drip basically in, in my gaff. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to start on that big question. I wonder where you stood. Uh, well, there you go. That's why that vote by the T Street bomb was fifty fifty the last time I looked. I guess. Uh, okay, well there is a Premier League meeting today. Uh, we don't know what that's what's going to come out of that, but as usual, there are already reports saying. It, they're just going to kick it into the grass, basically, and wait and see what happens. Your wafer have obviously come out and said they don't want any, any of the leagues to be scrapped. They, their advice to everyone is to just sort of wait and see. Um, so I imagine that that's all, all, all that will come out of it, although there was a mad piece on The Athletic last night about um, playing games in China. Sound. Uh, I, I guess I, I don't really want to get into that. It feels like every time we come on and do this, we, we talk about that. So we'll just have to wait and see. There will be unfair reaction to to that whatever happens uh, what I want to talk about instead is um, it's a bit depressing this but we've got to do it uh, the, on Sunday if normal service was in operation if you like if footy was still there we would have been playing Man City uh, and Man City obviously would have been you know guard of honour and that uh, we would have won the league um, I, I don't care about alternative scenarios that's the, that's the one that it would have been for oh. me Um and also, it would have been our chance to get revenge on them because uh, you know they were the only team. That was the only match basically that we lost last season. And even then, it was by millimeters. And even then, Vincent Company should have been sent off and all that kind of stuff. And feels so long ago, doesn't it? It actually feels so long ago since Liverpool played. Like I'm, I'm writing a piece, like I'm doing my weekly Unibet piece, and it's it's been graphed to write it. It's fair to say I was up till all hours trying to write it last night, and I'm gonna have to read it back. Whatever I wrote, I can't remember now. Um, but three weeks it is just over three weeks since we last played football it feels like an absolute lifetime doesn't it? Uh, honestly it's absolutely bonkers I think I think I've spoken about it a couple of times I think I'm back to that Atletico game but even the Atletico game still felt surreal Bournemouth not so much which was just before winning at the home game but the Atletico game all, almost felt that there was something going on in the background that had yeah. nothing to do with football. And it was like, even though you were there watching the Champions League, it, it, I can't I can't describe it. And it's not because we got knocked out, I swear down, it's not. There was just something looming over that ground. And I think it had to do with the Madrid fans coming over as well. And there was just something clearly bigger going on. And I think an anxiety of people going, well, when are we going to get to see this football team play again? And... It was strange. It was really, really strange. And when I come out that ground, even though it was sad about going out the Champions League, it, I wasn't devastated because you just knew that something was was about to happen. And it feels a lifetime ago. And it's weird when we talk about like winning the league and you talk about like the City game. Even that feels like it. It just feels like it's gone in a way. Like, uh, I mean, obviously it's going to be amazing when we do because I'm holding on to that that hope. But I feel like it's just so much in the back of my mind in a way because yeah everything's just changed dramatically and it feels like we're in like a big massive summer and the season's finished and we're just waiting around for the fuzzy to start we're not waiting around to win our first league in 30 years it's just it's absolutely mad yeah there's some stuff come out about that let's go game actually uh david Conn was talking about it uh last night saying that you know um it was the government it was government's advice that saw that game go ahead uh, and also, I think the uh, public health director for Liverpool has obviously said, with hindsight, as in the city of Liverpool, not Liverpool Football Club, um, saying that it shouldn't have gone ahead. I mean, it, it does. It felt a bit weird at the time, as you say, and it looks even more daft now that it went ahead. But you know, that obviously is with hindsight. But yeah, and you know, things like Cheltenham as well, and you're just like, you know, it would have been, it would have been Grand National uh, weekend this weekend as well. But you know. It's absolutely common sense that things like that, you know, fell by the wayside. And yeah, as you say, mad that Cheltenham and that that Atletico game went ahead. Uh, in terms of all the stuff going on, then um, Timo Werner, who we're all getting very excited about. Um, I'm not one normally for smashing the YouTubes and and getting really excited about <laughs> players. So that's that's more Rob Gutman's scene, but. Um, 
he was exciting me, I've got to say. I did watch the YouTubes and I did think I can see how this lad can fit into what we do. He looked very much a clock player. Um, I, I, was, I loved one of the goals that, that he scored this season in the Bundesliga where he simply just ran at defenders, went outside one and put it in the top bin, but absolutely boomed it into the top bin as well. And I just thought, yeah, I like the look of this fella. Uh, but the latest word on that is that obviously Liverpool were looking to take advantage of uh, a clause in his contract, which meant that he was available for £51 million. Um, but that, that's got to be triggered this month. Um, and it seems, you know, not unreasonably that Liverpool now don't particularly want to spend £51 million in April when there's so much uncertainty about what happens next uh, financially and in terms of the actual game. So it's said to be on ice now. Uh, it's also said that uh, Bayern Munich are having a bit of a sniff round them and that they want them. So we shall see. Um, it's funny because the piece that says we're definitely not getting them also says um, all recruitment plans have been shelved by Liverpool, uh, as well as any contract renewal talks. Then, uh, Build, which is obviously a German uh, newspaper, they're saying we're, we're, we're after Milo Rashica. Um, oh, yeah, then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, plays of Verde Bremen, 23, predominantly on the left wing, will cost around 33 million quid. Uh, he scored 10 goals this season. Uh, Villa are also interested. I mean... I mean, who knows which of those reports is accurate and which isn't really at the moment. It, it, it's, I imagine it's really difficult for the journalists to get anywhere right now as well. Um, but it would be a shame about Verna, wouldn't it? Because, you know, were you, were you getting excited about him as well? Yeah, I mean, I didn't let myself believe it. I thought it was like a pipe dream. And then I think the report stepped up so much that I was a little bit like this is going to happen, this is too many people talking about it and there's too much murmurs and even like the little interview we done after the Spurs game where they mentioned it to him, I think um, I was like, this this is going to be on now but it's all weird, isn't it? Because it all goes back to what's happening and it, it's you've got two sides here now, the pool, like they've got to design team over in it and pick everyone's spirits up in such a hard time because whether people like it or not, football is is so important to so many people. It's it's an escape. It's 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 what people love and it's what people do in the spare times. Help the mental health and stuff like that. So, do you do you have like a nice big sign and a big boost and then I don't know release a couple of interviews with them? But then if you look at what's going on, which is much bigger than football itself. A football club spending fifty one million pounds on a footballer in a time of crisis when you know people are on the front line and this that and the other and and there's money that needs to be spent elsewhere not on on not on Bundesliga football players as much as we want it to be uh, it just might it, I just think it's bad time and I think I think it would be bad time and they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to to cover it up it wouldn't be right um and I think it should just be left on the back burner now and and this isn't me doing the whole um, this is all down to Premier League footballers having to pay their way. I do think they have to in a certain way, but I was a little bit naive about it until I read into it and realised about like how much they pay in tax and stuff like that. But mm. there is a much bigger picture going on, and I just think it'd be a little bit of bad timing if they'd done it. But at the same time, oh, it's gotten to think that the the play we've been talking about for so long slipped through our fingers. It feels a little bit like Fakir, doesn't it, all over again? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Look, it, it could still be resurrected, perhaps. And, 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 you know, there's talk around contracts as well that, you know, one of the solutions could be that, you know, for instance, if a player has got a contract until June, does, will that instead be respected in terms of a month after whenever the season oh, eventually yeah. finishes? Yeah. So you wonder if, if that's what they end up applying to player contracts, maybe this clause is shiftable as well. Because, you know, like, I guess Timo Werner's representatives could say, well, listen, clubs were prepared to buy them for 51 yes. in, in April. But then, you know, coronavirus happened. No one saw that coming. So perhaps in, I don't know, July, August, September, whenever we return to normality or any kind of normality, perhaps then it can be resurrected. Who knows? Um Got going to give a shout out on this show to uh, Red All Over the Land. Uh, anyone who goes the match will, of course. I've heard the call. Reds all over the land. <laughs> Liverpool fanzine. Um, yeah, it is the last remaining printed fanzine that is still out there. Once upon a time, there were loads of them, four or five at times. And, you know, I did one myself call well Reds at one stage. Uh, but Reds all over the land is the remaining one, uh, edited by John Pearman, who's a nice fella. Uh, he's, he's emailed us this week just saying, obviously, it's a bit of a critical time for, for everyone right now. But Reds all over the land has been... 
graft I know for, for John now for a while in terms of, you know, a lot of people have changed how they consume media, including fan media, and a printed fanzine is not part of as many, you know, match day routines as it used to be. So it's hard for them to keep it going. They have kept it going, though. Uh, but obviously right now they're not at matches, so they're not able to sell it at the match. Uh, in his email then, he was saying that he's got around 250 copies left of issue 261, which he was confident he would have sold out at the, the Crystal Palace game. So now he's trying to sell it via Twitter, Facebook, any other format. It's £2.50. That also covers the cost of the postage. And a £1 donation for everyone sold will, will be made to the food banks. And f for every subscription purchased, £5 will go to the food banks. So, yeah, if you'd like to support the fanzine, uh, keep it going. It is a good read. It, it, it is a nice thing to have, nice thing to have in your hand other than the programme, something a little bit different produced by fans. Uh, you can purchase that fanzine at redallovertheland.com. Uh, you can also email redallovertheland at gmail.com if you're interested in subscribing and that kind of thing. And, yeah, just, just get behind it if you can do. Um, I mean, where, where are you on fanzines? Because, obviously, like quite a significant different age to me to me <laughs> to me they were massive and and you you've seen some of my collection in the office that kept getting oh in the way God. at one point <laughs> i had to move off of them gareth <laughs> <laughs> oh god no so it's weird because like when i first started going i've, I've said it many times on many shows i was like i was early teens so it was the program was still a thing for me uh, and it was like obviously when you first start going it's exciting to collect programs and that but I never really had a fanzine Um I always remember like the sticker books and stuff like that uh, I used to really like them and weirdly I used to have this weird obsession with Kevin Phillips and I have no re I have no <laughs> I don't know why but like I used to love the sticker books and do you know why it was it was because you know when you get like the same player over and over again and you're like oh I've got about 10 Kevin Phillips well I thought that was a good thing so I was like so I had this weird obsession with Kevin Phillips for a, for a bit so I never really had like a fanzine thing but I've heard so much about Red all over the land I've read it and I've seen it uh, and I kind of wish like I'd, I'd grown up or like been that was part of a little bit of a routine for me going the match to to go and pick up a, a fanzine or whatever they're so like the lovely and I think what people might not understand and I don't mean this to like patronize anyone is the the time effort love and care and everything that goes into them this is someone's baby this is someone's project like the love you feel for Liverpool Football Club is poured into this you know physical piece of of, of what's essentially like a bit of art for someone and yeah. like to support someone with that who, who loves the club just as much as we do is only a good thing as far as I'm concerned and the donations to the food banks is a no-brainer as well uh, you need to bin off that Kevin Phillips thing. I mean, he he, oh, he, I don't he, know what it was. he scored for them in front of the cop and cupped his ear to the cop so he can fuck right off. I know. I don't know. <laughs> honest to God, it was when he played for Sunderland as well because I just kept getting loads of them. So obviously when I wasn't really into footy, oh, Michael, go, we are, have these. <laughs> and it was just loads of Kevin Phillips. So I was like, did, you have, a f did, you, have, did you have a complete one? No, no, I never did. I think he did. I mean, like, I remember um, because you used to get shiny, didn't you, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and and I just remember like all the money that we'd spent. I'd even like give some of like my money to him to get to get the things because it was just as exciting. Like to be honest, I'd quite like one now. Like, how good would it be? But saying that's not an essential shop, shop so uh, maybe maybe not. No, uh, I mean <laughs> I I completed one in. I mean I'm I'm gonna sound absolutely ancient here, but you know accurate. Um, I, I completed one in 1986, and, uh, <laughs> and um, I remember I, I remember needing uh, or one of the last the last stickers I needed was John Lyle, who I think was then the uh, West Ham manager. And like so, so you know when you say Kevin Phillips, I just have as soon as anyone says Panini, I'm like fucking John Lyle. <laughs> but you know, like I, I remember having like a stack of stickers like that in the playground, and like. You know, it used to go through, didn't you? Like, go, 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 yeah. go, 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 go. And I'm someone one day, I had John Lyle. I was like, I need that! <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> remember, like, the book. They had a similar one. Um, so the one that, like, we used to do in school as well as the footy. Because uh, I think I'd done one around, like, one of the World Cups or something like that. Because it was just, like, a good thing to be involved in. But, like, we'd done, like, the Pokemon one as well. So there was, like, loads of Pokemon ones. But what I used to collect... Um, when I was younger, can you, again, it was, was it 2002 World Cup? I think it was. They had like these little map bobbleheads yeah, in like, in like, um, 
was it like Rice Krispies or something like that? And you had to collect like Erwin Beckham and stuff like that. So I used to I used to collect them and they were horrible. Like I didn't even like them. They were horrible. Yeah. You were a bit mad, weren't you? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know who came up with the idea of a little footy player with a massive head. But well, very um, good cereal as well. Like that's the only uh-huh. way you could get them by buying a, you know, I'll have a, I'll have a Michael Lowen with me cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have that on the agenda, did we? Um, <laughs> one thing we did have on the agenda though was that we we are carrying on all the way through. We keep saying this. We keep putting stuff out there. Um, there's some mad stuff. Uh, on the on the way out, God knows what it's going to be like. There's a uh, Ben Johnson's agony oh hour. Oh my God! <laughs> this I'm needs not... listening to five times before it goes out. By the way, because it's not just Ben Johnson, it's Neil, it's Paul Cope, and it's Rob Gutman answering wow. people's questions. Wow! Honestly, so, yeah. I mean, get the lawyers all over that one, I would say. Uh, but yeah, if that if that ever sees the light of day, that should be entertaining for you. <laughs> uh, what should also be entertaining is we are trying to keep stuff lighter and, and, and a little bit of a, a break away from all the news that you know all about that is everywhere right now and one thing that we've been doing you may well have seen is the uh, hot mic game so the idea behind this is that basically we watch uh, a liverpool game from the past uh, and we watch it live we watch it live with you you log into the you download and log in on hot mic look for the anfield rap You'll see us on there, you'll be able to talk directly to us as you're watching the match and as we're watching the match. You can sync it up so that we're all watching it at the same time. You're on your YouTube or you're on your Sky Sports and we're at exactly the same place at the same time and we all have a big, nice chat. Um, It's something social to do when we're all sort of locked up and locked away. Uh, And it's Friday night as well, so get yourself a bevy, get it downloaded, get involved. It starts at half seven tonight, match kicking off at eight. Um, and yet we are doing what was widely regarded as the greatest Premier League game ever, Liverpool for Newcastle 3. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this because I've got some stories around it. I didn't go, uh, but I watched it in Sheffield and uh, when I was at university there. And it's fair to say that um, there was some Newcastle fans in there as well as Liverpool fans. So <laughs> do the math. Um so yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk about that later on. Eh, on all your night. stories involve aggro all the time. <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, me and Kofi were doing something yesterday, and we were talking about um, you know, like say you had to get a job sometime in your life again that wasn't this basically. And I was like, I know, yeah. I was like, there's, you know, imagine like going in a suit or whatever, you know, like all you know, tie, shave. You know, hi, yes, I'm Mr. Corpus. Can I have this job, please? And like them just going, like just opening the laptop and going here. So yeah, we'd be listening to the podcast, the videos you used to do. Oh, Point number one. <laughs> that time in witness with it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like I'm just, ne- I'm never, I'm never gonna work again. So uh, you know, <laughs> please, please stay behind the Anfield app uh, for that reason alone, if nothing else. Um, yeah, so get involved with Hot Mike tonight. It should be good. It uh, should be one of the best ones you've done, I would I would suggest. Uh, I'm on it, so. Uh, but also Ian Ryan's on it um, and Neil. And yeah, Neil, Neil's been doing these for a while. And, you know, Neil should probably be on the telly or something anyway, let's all be honest. So um, this is basically the closest thing you'll ever see to Neil being on the telly. But obviously we can still be daft. And we can still be silly, and we can tell mad stories about kickoffs in Sheffield pubs. It's, um, uh, it's Neil, you, you and Cope. Oh, it's Cope. Paul is Cope it? stepped in for Ian Ryan. Ian Ryan jibbed it, let me down. <laughs> well, ah. I've words with him, God, if not me. Do you know what I mean? He's always letting me down. Him, I, I thought me and him had something special, but you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think we've we've covered everything now, haven't we? Is there anything else I haven't said? Yeah, just keep getting involved. Keep keep praying. Uh, stay hopeful. We've got this meeting to come. Uh, as I say, I don't. I'm, I personally don't think a lot's going to come out of it. I imagine they, they kick it into the grass and just say we're going to see what's happening. What they will say is obviously there's no chance of football being played at the end of this month, which was the the last deadline they came up with, wasn't it? So, yeah, fingers crossed. We do get to see that day. Jordan Henderson with the Premier League trophy, sunshine on our faces, beers in our hands. It's Friday. Time to be positive, eh? Hope that adds.